Okay. Well, let's be having here. All goodies. them all so that you can get dogs used to each bit in turn uh, which is absolutely wonderful so you just need to make sure because the screen is what bits go where what that way, way around. so how I start getting a dog used to it is I use the two pieces that make the the bit that will have the head in it so if it's perfect fit you've got one of the coloured pieces and one of the black pieces and what I want the dog to do is I want the dog to come forward put the head through Okay, and I'm just going to leave it hanging on them, like a necklace. So all it is is, is a necklace for them. And you can see that there's no bit attached, there's no fit. There's no trapping about. What I'm also going to do is I'm just going to start getting you, them used to being touched whilst it's on them. So I'll start touching. Yes. So I'm getting them used to being touched around the place where the clips go and used to because it's offensive for us to reach over I mean it's a real chimpy move. Dogs don't necessarily like being touched over the head or around the body. So all I'm going to do for that first, for a dog who's really sensitive to the harness, is I'm just going to be touching them. Um, so I've just got the two pieces and I'm just going to be touching them around those and getting them used to having it put on. That's the first bit. Um, now the worst bit about a harness is they're taking it off over the head and this is why I like the perfect bit. Because normally with a two buckle harness, when you want to put the back of the bits that are around the side here, thank you. Where's more? When you put the bits that are around the side here, you've got to do this, take it off over the head. Um, which can be quite uncomfortable for a dog because you're brushing their ears the wrong way and, and they don't know what's going on and why it's on back of it. So this is my first thing. You can see it's just natural for a dog to go, what are you doing? What's that going over my head? There we go. So that goes over the head and they'll just have it like a necklace, those two bits. And I can practice taking it off as well and, and doing the same thing. But if I've got a dog who's particularly sensitive to having it taken off, all I have to do is one by one. In fact, I don't even need to do any more than that. I just need to unclip that one. And so that's just a, an easy way to use the perfect fit. And what I would do is just I would probably spend a couple of days with this bit, getting them to come towards the harness and put their head through and having it on like a necklace where it's not attached. What, so I also get used to touching the buckles? Yes. Touch. Yes. Get it for. And if I've got a dog who doesn't mind it coming off over the head, I'll take it off over the head. I don't mind. But if I've got a dog who feels that's uncomfortable, I'm going to just take it off with the extra clip there. So they just get used to it coming off in a way that doesn't cause any kind of uncomfort, discomfortable moments, uncomfortable moments. And what I don't want is the dog backing up when I go to put it over the head. So I want them used to putting their head through. Ready? And them coming towards me rather than me going like this like a great big chimpy monkey. Testing. So 
I don't want big chimpy monkey. I want them used to putting their head through. Right. So, how we move that up to the next bit is them starting to get used to the bit, the, the, the extra buckles. So if I've got a harness that's just got two buckles, I would just do this anyway and get them used to wearing it with the, you know, it's not bothered that it's attached. But for a dog who's a little bit uncomfortable with the buckles going around, that's where I need the third, the third bit. Just going to reattach that bit. Looks right. And again, I'll do the same with that. I'll just spend a few days. So you, you can see now I've got the three bits all together. The three bits that are, make up the full harness. And so I've got them putting the head through. And again, if I wanted to, I can just leave it hanging and I can get them used to it, you know. And I can carry on with the touching over the head just to get them used to the, the sight of the buckle. But one of the hardest transitions then is how to get to the point, especially with a dog who's very sensitive, who has handling aggression, who's got constraint aggression, who doesn't like being touched, is secret weapon, which is a tub of something that smells amazing. And all my dogs are going to go smell. This is for the only dog who's going to put her head in. Heston, no. Do sit. Do sit. Okay, so this is for Felicia. She sticks her nose in and I reach underneath her. And when I'm not reaching underneath her, it stops. Okay, so I reach. You can use other things for this. So you can use the, um, <laughs> you can use anything that'll secure. I've seen people spread peanut butter on kitchen cabinets to be able to do it. You know, it's not. Uh, squeezy cheese on tiles. Uh, but what I use at the refuge is just a pot of pate. And I'm getting used to the fact that when I reach through, it's, it's a pleasure. Come on. What you can't necessarily and very easily do is do it off. And you can see already, this is, it's, it's not a natural position for a dog to be in, and it's not a comfortable position for a dog to be in, with you bending over them no matter how you do it. Okay? And so, that's why I like something fixed, and why I, that's why I'll often use, um, that's why I'll often use, um, like, Smeared on, on a flat surface, not while so the mile me or the dogs are around, but it has to go on, it has to go said. So that every time she has the harness put on and I'm reaching around, it comes associated with something that's going to take her some time to lick. The only time I wouldn't do this is whether I've got a food aggressive dog uh, who is guardy around food. Um, and I, do, I wouldn't be using toys and balls and things like that simply because a toy creates energy, it doesn't, it doesn't um, detract from the energy of your dog and so that can make it hard as well. And so one of the hardest things is if you've got a, a dog who's got handling issues and feels uncomfortable being handled and you know that they feel uncomfortable being, hand, uh, uh, uncomfortable being handled and you're worried about taking the harness off, let's take them around. The best and easiest thing to do is to have a perfect fit harness with four, or any other harness that's got four buckles, because you can unclip three of them, get the harness off without very without having to kind of manipulate or manoeuvre the dog. Is that right? Is that for you? Can you sit? Good job. So when I'm moving it up to um, them getting used to having the harness put on. I usually use the two clips at the top, get them used to putting their heads through. What have you got in your mouth, you? Get them used to having their head put through. Are you ready? Get 
get them used to having me come around and reach underneath them. And again, when I'm doing this at the beginning, I'm not going to take them for a walk straight off in the harness, so it doesn't matter whether it fits fully or not. Uh, and that's the bad thing about having something that's in this hand, because I can't use my other hand now to, to do the buckles. Um, but it's not too impossible. And if they like being touched, I can use that as well. But the, that's the, the good thing about the perfect fit harness is that you can use, or any other harness with four buckles, is that you can unclip and clip as many as is useful. <laughs> Very exciting, and that's what I want. Is an emotion. I want the dog who's like, yeah, this is good. So I'll start with it as a necklace, usually with just the two pieces. And then <laughs> you are. And another week for getting them used to um, having the necklace put on with the three bits. If you're worried about taking it off over the head, you never need to, which is a good reason for the four buckle ones. And that way, when you come to do the harness up fully, and get it fitted and stuff. If you've got a dog who's got a history of not liking being kind of strained or you're worried about the kind of highest put on, that way you get them gradually used to. <laughs> there you go. You get them gradually used to having all the bits attached to each other. And no, you don't need to use pate for life. It will get to the point where they'll associate it with going for a walk. <laughs> Put that between my legs for the last bit, lovely. There we go. And they'll get used to it being on, going for a walk, and that in itself will be exciting. And the harness is more comfortable anyway. So that way, with something to occupy them up front, I can make sure that it's fitted correctly. Ready? Let's put that through there. I can do any adjustments that I need to do. And you know, when I'm getting them used to wearing the harness, these are the things that I want them to get used to doing. I've me leaning over them, and that, that's not a horrible or uncomfortable thing. I've me checking the, t the straps are tight. I've me manipulating the harness. I've me taking the harness on and off. And the good thing about the four buckle harnesses is I've never had to take it off over the top. Having that last bit lovely? What a supermodel! <laughs> so there you go. Why I love perfect fit harnesses for that. <laughs>